When you go to purchase an over-the-counter remedy for menopause, how do you know which one will work for you? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how menopause remedies fall into three categories, what each category does to help relieve menopause and postmenopause discomfort, and how using remedies from all three categories in the proper ratio will give you the most complete relief. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dana Lavoie, an acupuncturist and herbalist with over 15 years experience specializing in women's health. And I'm here to show you how to use customized Chinese herbs combined with the best diet and the best lifestyle for your hormones to feel amazing during and after menopause. So let's dive in. What are the three categories of menopause remedy? Well, each one of the categories is related to a different hormonal imbalance or struggle your hormones are having during or after menopause. So for category one, the hormonal struggle is that your hormone levels are going too low. And the category one remedies include things that support your body in bringing those hormone levels back up. Now this is the most common type of menopause remedy you'll see. It's usually something that's rich in plant estrogens, which are like raw hormone material your body can easily turn into usable hormones. But hormone replacement therapy is also a remedy that falls into this category. Examples, over-the-counter examples would be soy, guai, black cohosh, peraria morifica, herbs like that. But here is an insider tip for you on using remedies from category one. Not all plant estrogens are the same. So the most basic way of using remedies from this category is to just choose one herb that's rich in plant estrogens and take that herb. But a better way and the way that we do it in Chinese herbal medicine is to choose from among all the herbs rich in phytoestrogens, plant estrogens, and other phytochemicals that help support all your hormone levels. Find the one that is the best for you right now because some of them support progesterone more, which is great for perimenopause and mood swings and estrogen dominance. Some support estrogen more, which is great for dryness and brain fog and bone health. And some support testosterone more, which is great for libido and metabolism and also for bone health. You also wanna make sure that the one that you choose matches your temperature. For example, if you're feeling very hot, choose herbs rich in those plant estrogens that are cooling. For example, Dangwai is commonly used as a rich source of those plant estrogens, but it's actually a bit warm and drying. So even though it is a commonly used Chinese herb, it is not the go-to herb in Chinese medicine for menopause usually. Uh, we choose other ones instead. So, so, and some of the herbs in this category that are really great for estrogen and that are cooling and moistening are also considered sticky and hard to digest. Now in Chinese medicine, what will happen is these will be used in combination with other herbs that make them easier to digest and easier for your body to utilize. So that's my insider tip for category one, supplements that help bring your hormone levels back up when they've gone too low. Category two. In category two, the hormonal struggle is your hormones are out of balance with each other because your body is struggling to fine tune bringing hormone levels up or down. Um, and this is due either to the liver not activating hormones or not detoxifying hormones efficiently, or the endocrine system just not sending out the right signals at the right times. Like, oh look, bring this one up two marks, and oh, bring this one down two marks. It's just not sending all those messages out correctly, or it's not able to follow up on them because it can't bring one up or it can't bring one down. So the remedy, the remedies in this category are going to support liver function and support the endocrine system in its job of micromanaging those hormone levels. Example, for the detoxification part, you'll often see things like milk thistle. And for endocrine support, you'll often see adaptogens. The most common one that you're going to see for menopause is going to be maca. But here are my insider tips for remedies in category two. 
Milk thistle is not my go-to liver support herb for menopause because it is drying and draining to your energy, which are both the opposite of what we're trying to do in menopause. Also, it's only supportive of stage one liver detoxification, which means that it's very good at getting toxins out of your liver into your blood, but then they float around in your blood and then they go back into your liver if it's not also used with phase two detoxification support. Um, so instead, I would recommend using herbs that support both stage one and stage two detoxification functions of the liver, that support liver function in general, and that rebuild your energy levels instead of draining them while they're doing all that. And my second insider tip when it is when it comes to adaptogens. Not all adaptogens are the same. For instance, maca is very adaptogenic, which can be great, but it is also a little bit warm and hard to digest, even when it's gelatinized. For some women, it's a tough one. So it works for some women, but the art, the whole art and science of Chinese tonic herbalism is like all about adaptogens. Choosing from among all the different adaptogens to find just the right one at the right time, one that matches your temperature and your specific needs, and it's about combining a few of the right adaptogens for really broad spectrum adaptogenic support for your endocrine system, for your immune system. Um, it's pretty exciting when you really get those adaptogens working for you. So those are my insider tips for choosing remedies from category two for supporting liver function and the endocrine system. So in category, and that's for um, helping your body manage the hormone levels. Once you have enough hormones, you need to manage them really efficiently. Category three is a really interesting one. Okay, so the hormonal struggle here is high stress hormone levels are interfering with the balance of your female hormones. So this might seem a little off label or not directly related to menopause, but because lower progesterone levels means we are more sensitive to stress once perimenopause begins, stress is often a significant factor holding you back from feeling better during and after menopause. In fact, multiple studies have shown that meditation or deep breathing exercise, which regulate stress hormone levels, can cut hot flashes by about 50%. So there is a direct correlation here. Now for some women, managing stress is like a 10 or 20% factor holding them back from feeling better during menopause. For other women, it's more like 80% of what's holding them back. Now, yes, meditation and deep breathing are really important here, but if hormonally and energetically you are just wired for stress, that meditation is like trying to walk through a door that is closed and locked. Herbal support for stress that supports stress hormonally and energetically is like opening that door. Then in your meditation, you just put a little intention into walking through the doorway and you're there, you get huge results. Without that herbal support, you can do a whole lot of meditation and still be staring at that closed door or just barely getting stress under control. So what are some remedies and examples of things that you would find to use in this category three? Many over-the-counter remedies can help with stress. However, a lot of them, like say valerian, which is a common one, are sedating. So they can also make you tired or groggy, which is fine at bedtime, but not what you want all day long. There are others like magnesium, B vitamins, or L-theanine that might be better daytime choices. Here's my insider tip. Chinese herbalism has three different main ways of supporting healthy stress hormone levels. And when you put those all together, you get some of the most sophisticated, far-reaching stress support out there. Um, so the three, there's lots of ways Chinese herbs can help with stress. There's three main ones that I wanna talk about. The first of those three is adaptogens for stress. Life is a series of stresses, it just is. From changes in temperature that our body has to respond to appropriately, to uh, the common cold, trying to invade and your immune system responding to that stress, to healthy exercise. Healthy exercise is a stress that creates a certain amount of inflammation that your body has to respond to appropriately. Stress is not going away. Adaptogens help the body respond better to those stresses when they happen. So they help support that healthy stress response on a deep level. 
Then the second type of Chinese herbs for stress are herbs that help with liver chi stagnation. So this is more associated with irritability, lack of patience, anger, mood swings, PMS, muscle tension, TMJ, and even things like high blood pressure and some types of headaches. These herbs help to flow the free of liver chi, which helps you to feel more relaxed without being sedated. It's the same kind of feeling that you get after a good cardio workout, because a good cardio workout also frees the flow of liver chi. But with herbs, you can get that feeling all the time. So exercise addicts out there, this one's for you. The third type of stress support is Shen tonics. These are not as much for acute anxiety or irritability. They work over time to enhance your meditation practice, to enhance your meditation, um, your wisdom, and to enhance your creativity. And to me, menopause and postmenopause are all, big picture, all about women coming into our wisdom. So I love including these Shen tonic herbs and I especially love transitioning into these herbs as the more acute mood swings and irritability are relieved. So what I really hope is that you'll start thinking big and outside the box when it comes to what's possible in terms of stress support. Okay, so the last thing I said we talk about this in this video is how to choose remedies from all three categories in the right ratio. Um, because to get the most complete relief and to get the hormonal support you need all during perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, you want to use remedies from all three categories in the right ratio, and that ratio will change all the time. Now, I just want to say that the biggest mistake I see women making when using over-the-counter remedies for menopause is they choose remedies from one category, but not from the other two, or from two and not from the third. And that's why they get partial relief, or they get relief for a little while and then it stops working. Um, but so making sure that you're using, getting support from all three categories is important. Um, and just know for some women, at some times, it might be, you know, 80% of those plant estrogens with just a little bit of support from categories two and three. For other women, it might be 80% stress and sleep support with just a little bit of support from categories one and two, but all three will be addressed. So in conclusion, the best over-the-counter remedies for menopause will address low hormone levels by giving your body the plant estrogen building blocks or even hormone replacement therapy to help your body bring hormone levels back up. Number two, they'll help your body make use of those new hormones by supporting your body's own hormone regulating mechanism with adaptogens and by supporting liver function for hormone activ activation and detoxification. And number three, they'll help keep stress and stress hormone levels under good control and help you sleep better if supporting you in sleeping better if needed. And you'll choose remedies from all three categories in the right ratio for you. And that ratio will change most likely at each stage of your menopausal transition and change again in your post-menopausal years. Now, I'm sure you have picked up that I find custom combinations of Chinese herbal remedies to be the most sophisticated and most effective way to support your hormones during and after menopause. If you think you might be interested in giving these a try and seeing what they feel like, I would really love to help you find just the right combination of herbs for you right now. But doing that is more than I can put in a 10 minute blog video, which is why I am teaching some upcoming hour long master classes on just this topic. The class is free, it's online, and in it you'll find out exactly how to go about finding just the right combination of Chinese herbs that changes with you over time during and after menopause. So I highly recommend you go save your seat in that next master class. If you are watching this video way in the future and I'm not currently teaching the master class, look for a link to another free resource from me that you can use to get some help with menopause relief right now because then once you get that we will be connected by email and you will get an invitation the next time I am teaching the master class but if that free master class is available right now don't miss out go save your seat thank you so much for your time and watching with me today I'm Dana Lavoie. I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist with over 15 years experience specializing in women's health. 
I'm here to show you how to use customized Chinese herbs combined and supported by the best diet and the best lifestyle for your hormones during and after menopause so that you can feel really amazing during those years. And I am here for you. So if you have questions about this video, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them for you. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, definitely go ahead over and check it on my blog for a full written recap, for more info, for links. It's totally worth it. Worth it. So I will look for you in the masterclass. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.